Who is the most important X Factor player that needs to step up for a Ravens playoff win? We jumping straight into it with this first question from my guy Joshua. He said, What's up, Engraven? Great job on another season covering the Ravens meticulously. Uh, I know you'll say you're not, but you are the man. No, I am a man, but definitely not the man. But I, I appreciate you. I appreciate the, the questions that you done sent in this year because. You've been bringing it, and you, you don't pull no punches or nothing, so I always appreciate that. Anyway, he said, believe it or not, I actually have faith about a Ravens win this weekend. Oh, me too. We on the same boat. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, I'm not blind. The Bengals are clearly the better team, but their tendency to get away from the run game can shoot them in the foot, especially if the Ravens can find a way to hog time of possession and force enough three and outs to keep them under 24 points. If our defense and special team keeps – the game in arm's reach. Who do you think on offense besides whoever is at quarterback needs to have the biggest X Factor game of their career for this win against all odds? Um, if I got to go on offense, um, I would say specifically J.K. Dobbins. Um, I would say J.K. Dobbins because... If, the, if he can have a game, like have a game, then the Ravens can control the game. And if the defense can do what they've – they've been doing pretty good overall against Joe Burrow this year. They should have Marcus Peters back, so that'll be nice. Daryl Worley, like, played out of his mind. He obviously got Marlon Humphrey. Uh, Kyle Hamilton been coming along strong. He got Marcus Williams, and this will be a Bengals game that he finishes. I mean, he finished the last one too. Um, Roquan Smith, this will be his second Bengals game. Uh, but – I would say uh, J.K. Dobbins because if he's going off, then and, and, and they're scoring in the red zone too. That's so important. But if he's going off, then the Ravens, they're not only controlling the clock, but they're converting. They're getting first downs. Uh, they're keeping drives alive. Uh, the clock is moving. So they're holding the ball, like you mentioned, time of possession. So I would say him. And then, um, I mean, we, we, we brought up so many people on defense already. Uh, but yeah, if I had, if I could go for a unit, like say a unit that would be the X factor, I would say the offensive line because the off, and I know it sounds so oh, offensive line. That's such a boring answer, but it's true because the offensive line can set the tone and keep the tone for the game. If they doing great run blocking, like they have been doing, especially recently, JK Dobbins could go off. If they do great pass blocking, that's the one right there where it's like, ooh, ugh. If they can be great pass blockers, then that'll give Anthony Brown or Tyler Huntley, but it'll give Anthony Brown a whole lot of time uh, for his receivers to drop passes. Next question is, I was, I was just playing. Oh, uh, I was playing, but I wasn't playing. Cause y'all know, but anyway, I, I'm just playing. I'm just messing around. But anyway, next question came from Lynetta. Uh, she said, hey, Graven, uh, how are you and the family? Hey, we're doing really good, Lynette. I, I appreciate it. She said, I have a question. With Lamar posting about his injury, do you think the players will try to win it all for Lamar? Or is this wishful thinking? I'm just wondering, what do you think? Thank you for all that you do, and I appreciate you. Hey, no, I appreciate you. Now, yeah, I, I can see that they're, they're, of course, trying to win it for Lamar, but a lot of them, they're just trying to win it for themselves. They're just trying to win it, period. Um, I, I think with Lamar just talking about his injury status and whatnot, him putting it out there, that... I think it's something that they probably knew already. Um, but it just makes it official to the world now. Like, oh, okay, yeah, Lamar's done. Um, but it does put even more pressure on them since they don't have their Superman at quarterback. Um, it puts pressure on all the next men up because Lamar, when he was there, um, he nine times out of ten, he alleviated pressure off of people. There will be some games where he put more pressure on people. He was having a rough game. But um, nine times out of ten, he's alleviating a lot of pressure off a lot of people, and he does because he does so much. He does so much. Um, so yeah, I, I think yeah, they're gonna try to win it for Lamar, but they're gonna try to win it for themselves too. You you got guys that's, I mean, you 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 don't you don't always get a chance like this. You don't always get an opportunity. Like playoffs is for for some players in their careers, it's worked out where they've been to the playoffs a lot of times. Other players, it's like oof, playoffs came far and few. Calais Campbell, like who knows if th this could be it for him? Justin Houston. This could be it for him. Um, and there's other guys that are pending free agents, don't know where their career is headed. Some guys may be thinking about retirement right now. They may not have just come out with it or whatnot. But you got to take every opportunity. So, yeah, I think they are going to try to do it for Lamar. But I think even more than that, they're trying to do it for themselves. Next question came from Amari. He said, man, that tweet from Legoat was a breath of fresh air. Uh, even though he isn't playing, it quiets down trade rumors for now. What do you think, my guy? I don't think that quiets down trade rumors at all. Like, 
not one bit. Um, I, I didn't get that from Lamar telling everybody about his injury that it quieted down trade rumors. I, I think um, the only thing that will quiet down trade rumors if, is if Lamar signed a contract with the Baltimore Ravens. Next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, are we overhyping Lamar? Engraving, Happy New Year. Thank you for the channel. I'm a new, uh, new subscriber. Only found you a few weeks ago, and you're my primary source for news about the Ravens. I, I appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you, man. Uh, now, considering the league has shown that by containing the run and playing the beat us with your arm Lamar game, are we overhyping Lamar? Looking at the season, the stat of no pass Passing touchdowns for 13 weeks points out a glaring weakness in Lamar's game, especially in clutch situations. Oh, um, yeah. As, as far as the title question, are we overhyping Lamar? No. Uh, then as far as where you broke it down about the whole no passing touchdowns for 13 weeks. Um, I, no, I um, wasn't it a pat no passing touchdowns to a wide receiver. I think that's that's what it was. No passing touchdowns to a wide receiver, something like that. But um. You you look at you look at what Lamar and the Ravens have accomplished with what they have on offense. Look at how much they've won with what they've or really actually what they haven't had on offense. That's that's a better way I should put it. Um just a lot of lackluster talent there uh at skill positions. I mean, really every position on in football is a skill position cuz you got to have skill to play those positions. Um but you look at how successful they've been uh, And then you look at other teams Around the league Because I know a lot of people like to point out Oh man, if we got a wide receiver We could end up being like the Raiders Or like the, the Cardinals Or uh, what's some other teams that, that have nice wide receivers But they still haven't done good But you get what I'm saying that A lot of people bring that up So then you could flip that around And be like, well, look at what the Ravens have done And the success that they've had Without those guys at that position Um and it speaks volumes to Lamar Jackson. It speaks volumes. Uh, so that's, that's why I just, I really been hoping that we could see him in a situation where he does have it. Um, but again, another conversation for another day. So no, we are not overhyping Lamar. Lamar will sign the non-exclusive franchise tag. Next question came from my guy, Matt. He said, Engraven, thanks for the constant stream of Ravens content. Nah, I appreciate you watching it. He said, the only way the Ravens will find their way out of the Lamar Jackson contract situation unscathed is by tagging him with the non-exclusive tag this year, not next. If we exclusively tag Lamar, he may just sit uh, and the Ravens end up in a Kirk Cousins 2.0 scenario after the tag. Here's why the Ravens will only put the non-exclusive tag on Lamar. Uh, this would let Lamar shop and find that guaranteed deal, maybe. But Shadi doesn't want to do a Deshaun structured deal. But if another team offers it, well, he would have to do the deal. I hope uh, he's not going to lose Lamar. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, one, buddy. But anyway, uh, he said optics shift away from the Ravens furthering the fully guaranteed contract. Uh, shift for quarterbacks and instead shifts the focus to the team that forced our hand uh, since two first round picks would also be due Lamar may not get a guaranteed contract which may help EDC negotiate a more team friendly deal I see what you're saying it's like if he's talking to another team that puts the pressure on Steven and EDC and them but I just I don't think it's I just don't think it's gonna happen right now We'll see, though. But anyway, he said, essentially, this puts all the cards on the table. The only card still hidden would be how much Lamar could get as a free agent uh, without two first-round picks or any trade capital tied to him, uh, which, given his contract situation, Ravens would never let be shown. What do you think? I'm not, le I'm not hearing anyone talk about the strategy around the non-exclusive tag and how it could be leveraged in this unique situation. I love Lamar. I love the Ravens. Everyone loves him. No. <laughs> Trust me. No, they don't. And that's okay. He said, I love Lamar, I love the Ravens, everyone loves Engraven. No, that, no. But again, like I said, well, that's okay. Uh, I hope the two parties can come to a business agreement that works for both. Um, so, hey, we'll see. Uh, I just don't see it going down, though. But it's time. It's time, so anything could turn around, right? Steve. Next question came from my guy Thomas. He said, I appreciate you and the kindness of your family. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the years before Steve began uh, to be the main owner of the Ravens, the Postal Service used to buy hundreds of tickets and take Baltimore City school kids to the games. Once he took over, he was not interested in group tickets, but only season ticket holders to purchase extra seats. This showed me that he wasn't a team player, but I got mine. You have your you have yours to get type of attitude uh, ever since then. It's as you say, as long as I can make money, I'm good. Uh, this gives me the impression that Harbaugh is in on it. And there's also a puppet on a string Do as I say and lay low For your under the table bonus 
Uh, there comes a time when you have to stop crossing oceans for people when they won't even jump puddles for you. Uh, hey, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, he's an owner. So that's that's what he's in it to do, make money. That's what owners are in it to do, make money. And, I mean, yeah, I, it, Harbaugh being under him, like not even being the GM. Harbaugh is, is the owner, is the GM, then it's the head coach. So, yeah, Harbaugh just going to run with whatever Steve said because that, that's the one that's cutting the check. Next question came from my guy Emerson. He said, I have a beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy in the event Lamar walks via free agency or he ain't walking via free agency. You know that ain't happening. But he said, or if he is tagged and traded. Okay, there's another one. Uh, although I hope Lamar is in on the long-term plans, it seems increasingly unlikely. Uh, the Ravens will be set up with a strong run game and a strong defense regardless of what happens this offseason. But what will be lacking if Lamar is gone is any sense of a pass game. First off, Greg Roman needs to be gone. But even in that case, receivers still aren't going to want to come to Baltimore. That is very true. Um, that, that's very true. And I think that would be the case if Greg, Roman, obviously, if Greg Roman stays. But even if Greg Roman leaves and they bring in another offensive coordinator, I still think if in order for Ravens to get a receiver, they would have to sort of overpay, so to speak. Um, and simply because they will need to prove that their passing game can be real. And that's going to take at least a year to do because you got to show – people on the outside a level of consistency you got to show them that okay their offense just ain't the, the silly stuff no more okay cool but anyway um he said there is a solution for that however that being in bringing in a 46 year old quarterback who is set to be a free agent this offseason it sounds crazy but the man has historically succeeded with a strong run game a strong defense and an elite tight end all of those things are a given in baltimore next year trade for mike evans or some elite guy in the event lamar is traded use those picks to beef up the secondary and then the old line and the only flaw, it seems, is they drafted a center built for a mobile quarterback in a run-first offense. That being said, I don't think it's a deal-breaker. If we can't keep Lamar long-term, at least get us a Super Bowl before the inevitable years of mediocrity. Sorry for the long question. Thank you. So, he is talking about Tom Brady to the Ravens. Um, that would be wild. That, that would be crazy. Um, but if, if Tom Brady went to the Baltimore Ravens, then all the calls that the Ravens don't get right now, oh, oh they, they will get them all, all of them. Um, they will get uh, just as many primetime games, if not more, because Brady to the right, that would be, that would be insane. Um, Brady would, uh, he would be like, uh, he would be a quarterback, but also an assistant head coach, because, uh, you know, he would, he would run the show. Like, he, he, he would run the show. Um, but <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That's crazy, man. That, 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 that's crazy. Then Gronk would probably want to come out of retirement and be like, oh, okay, I'll play now. Um, but that, yeah, I, I, I've never, like, even thought of anything like this before. This is a very unique question. On a lighter note, next question came from Griffins. He said, I know that there's a lot of things to be down on about, uh, about us as of right now. Sending this before we lose to the Bengals, by the way. Hold up there, buddy. Who said we losing? But anyway. Uh, but how about we talk about uh, something a little more lighthearted? Why don't we have red and black Ravens jerseys? I mean, because their colors are purple. I mean, that the practice, those, those practice jerseys, those black and purple practice jerseys. Ooh. But anyway, uh, that would be awesome, especially because in the logo, there's a hint of red. Just a fun little thing uh, to think about amongst all this chaos. As usual, stay safe and hashtag team keep it clean. I appreciate it, man. But um, yeah, before they even step to a red and black jersey, they need to drop those black and purple practice jerseys. Next question came from Kingston. He said, there's still a chance. I know everybody is talking about the Ravens having no chance to win against the Bengals, but I think there's still a chance even without Lamar. I agree. I'm right there with you, man. But let's keep going. He said, here's my opinion. The Ravens defense played well against the Bengals. Joe Burrow threw uh, 25 for, 40, for 42, uh, 215 yards and one touchdown. That is not the Joe Burrow we know. Now, of course, newly paid Roquan Smith had 16 tackles and four assists. Also saw Kyle Hamilton make some plays along with David Ajabo having a strip sack. That's just the defense. The problem was the offense. Here's where it gets complicated. Of course, we had to start rookie Anthony Brown and Harvard decided the system starters, but there is still problems. We had four turnovers, four. And one of them resulted in a touchdown. You cut that touchdown, uh, the story is different. I think it was five turnovers, right? He said, of course, Pro Bowl Tyler Huntley is going to have the chance if Lamar doesn't play. I think Snoop played his best half versus the Steelers in the first half. But the same problem, lost us the game. Mistakes. Yeah, mistakes. Um, let me, real quick, let me try to remember. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he had the fumble. 
Um, uh, Anthony Brown, he had the fumble. Anthony Brown, there was the pick, the really bad pick that he threw. Uh, there was also um, the pick that he threw. I mean, Demarcus Robinson dropped it. So that's four turnovers. I really thought there was another one. I feel like I'm missing one. Next question came from my guy, Brendan. He said, Ain't Graven, I've uh, been watching for a while and always wanted to say something. I've heard around Twitter that Lamar has not been helping himself off the field as he may go to physical therapy, but he is resisting diets and keeping himself in good shape. So in my opinion, he will be franchise tagged, but not exclusively. If a team would want to pick up his contract for two first round picks, uh, they will trade him before the draft for players and picks. Love the flock let's go ravens love the channel and hope your fam is doing well appreciate that brendan and yeah i mean if, if they uh I, I don't know if that's true or not as I, I i can't say um but yeah if if he did get traded it would definitely be before the draft because ravens not they wouldn't trade him for only future picks for like Two years down the road. No, they, they would trade him for picks right here, right now. Next question came from my guy, BG Method. He said, Engraven, uh, this is the first time I'm going in on question from subs. I got a few questions and comments. Not that you asked, but I'm from b -more. I have been a Ravens fan since 98. I didn't immediately, I didn't immediately fall in love with him. Uh, I'm an active duty Army vet and the young football player from Mervo High School in b -more that passed back in 2021 uh, was my cousin. Ooh, sorry about that, man. Uh, I always appreciate Hollywood for repping him at the game. Uh, I also sent these questions to Ravens Vault. I think Roe and Williams, our new wave, Lewis and Reed, are great cornerstones going forward. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree because they, they, both, they both bring it. They both have their hiccups along the way, but nobody's going to play perfect every single week. Uh, he said, I do believe EDC is going to work on the wide receiver problem more diligently this offseason. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's obvious to everyone that it's going to hold us back if they don't. Uh, he's only going to go so far, though. So I think it rules out DeAndre Hopkins. I'm 85% sure of that. So, hey, we'll see what that 15% could do. Uh, we need a strong offensive coordinator that takes more advantage of Lamar Jackson's arm talent. Uh, if Lamar Jackson's arm talent is still here next year. So that's to be determined. He said, with all that said, here's my questions. Uh, uh, Way and Ajabo, who has a better chance of becoming the Suggs type of guy? Oh, man. Um, Adafi Way started off strong last year. Then this year, just, I don't know what it's been. I know one of my guys was saying that he, he got a, like a he got a, like a slow little get off uh, from the line. He, like, he got a slow takeoff. Um, and that's like holding him back. Uh, and and then the same guy he said that a job oh makes it look easy, um, and I was like oof well <laughs> he didn't even play that much but he yeah he did his thing last game, um, so I don't know I, I think it's too early to tell uh, obviously the Dafe away we gotta be, he gotta build up consistency um, and David Ajabo gotta just build up because he's only played in a game in a play. Uh, well, a game in like four play. I think he was on special teams that first game that he played, but he only played one defensive snap that first game. So I, I think for me, it's too early to tell because we don't even know. We don't know a job all yet. I mean, Adafi away, you kind of know, but hopefully in his third year to be like, oh, okay, there it goes. He's back. He said, I don't think it's too late for a way. There's flashes. Remember how long it took Paul Kruger and Adelius Thomas? Oh, boy. Uh, where do we get that wide receiver? Who are you looking at? Can we draft him uh, with only five picks this year? I like Harrison Jr., but I don't think he's coming out. Nah, he, he ain't not eligible yet. Uh, we would have to trade a bunch of assets to get in position for him, like Atlanta did for Julio. Um, as far as wide receiver, I, in my opinion, what I think they should do, I think you should draft, some, draft somebody who's NFL ready. Um, whether it's first round, early second. I know they ain't got that many picks right now. They're going to get more picks. You, you know they are. Ravens, Ravens going into a draft with five picks? Never. They would never. They, ain't, I will, they would something. But they ain't, they ain't doing it this year. Um, but I would say to draft a high receiver, draft an NFL-ready receiver, and also trade uh, for somebody who's nice now, too. Whether that be DeAndre Hopkins, I know Mike Evans. I, Mike Evans will cost more than DeAndre Hopkins to trade for. Um, so if it's DeAndre Hopkins, okay, cool. If it's Mike Evans, oh, okay, cool. Um, and I think somebody like uh, Lazard, that wouldn't be my first choice. Uh, but I'd be like, oh, okay. But so I, I would double down at the position. I know Rashad Bateman's supposed to come back. Devin Duvernay's supposed to come back. But I'm, I'm not going into this season being like, all right. Um, Rashad Bateman and this other guy, the veteran, whoever we get, y'all, y'all are it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm loading up, man. I feel like they should have been loaded up, but 
I'm loading up for whoever the quarterback ends up being so he have even more. He said, lastly, who could be the next offensive coordinator and why doesn't anyone seem to think T. Martin is a possibility? I heard a lot of people talking about T. Martin before, but I haven't heard as many people saying it recently. He said he didn't run a Giro type offense in college. He now has experience with those run concepts. Maybe he can merge it uh, with some creative passing concepts to create a hybrid version. I really believe that's why they hired him. Harbs doesn't like guys he doesn't know in coordinator positions. That's true. You're right. He don't, he don't like guys he don't know in any positions. For real. Uh, he knows T now. Uh, let's unlock Lamar Jackson. Uh, hey, that We can hope that Lamar Jackson will be unlocked. We, we really can. I really hope so. But with this team, the way that they operate, the, the, the way that they think, the way that they move, I just don't see it ever happening. I don't. They would have to change a lot of stuff to really just get LJ potential reached I, I i just can't see it right now though i i can't i would love so but so much to be wrong about that but the way that they've operated I, I just can't see it happening right now uh he said i appreciate your platform and i love how you carry it uh, just like everyone else that gets long-winded and questions from themselves forgive me team keep it clean i hope you uh 410 in the vault get some more work together in oh yeah 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 shout out to them man glenn glenn and james those my guys man um i remember uh when I first met them, they had me on. But before they before they jumped into YouTube, they had me on their uh, podcast. It was just audio podcast. It was in 2019. It was the, I want to say the Thursday or maybe the, yeah, I think it was the Tuesday or the Thursday uh, before the Ravens and Patriots game in 2019. I'll never forget um, because I think, uh, I think Glenn said that it was actually his – nephew or little cousin that had put him on to our channel um and then yeah the rest been history they, they've been on here plenty of times we've been on there plenty of times they, they they cool people man and then uh with the vault that's uh with, with bobby b bobby baltimore bobby t he got so many different names though so shout out to him i know he's been doing this thing over there um and then he with the vault with sarah shout out to sarah 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 she like super cool man she 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 she's super cool. I I I I gotta have her back on. I gotta actually have both of them back on. Really, all four of them back on. Um, but I I remember when Sarah first came on. Um, Sarah Ellison. Uh, I I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous because I'm like, man, this is somebody who used to like work for the Ravens, and she coming on my channel. Like, oh man, like, but she is super super cool, man. And um, she she's she's really good. She comes in, she brings her stuff, she brings good energy. Uh she she she's super cool. So shout out to Sarah Ellison, man. Um, but anyway, he said, Go Ravens, Morgan State stand up. Shout out to Elijah Gorham, my little cousin. Rest in peace. And just like the ugly mustard and gold Ravens uniform pants, I'm out. Hey, I appreciate you a lot, man. Next question came from my guy, Gavin. He said, Ain't Raven, hope you and your family are doing well. I'm just curious where your confidence level is with Lamar not likely to play on Sunday. If Huntley starts, I feel he can manage the game well enough to allow J.K. and Gus to have a big game. Uh, the defense will do their thing like we saw last week. So I think if the offense can put up 17 or 20 and not turn the ball over, they could hold the Bengals and maybe squeak this one out. This one will be more on coaching than ever. Oh, man. I um thank you for that reminder, uh, cause it will be because when when your back, I mean, excuse me, when your star quarterback is out, there's a lot more pressure that gets put on you as a coaching staff. Um, so you you got to be like better than perfect in order in this playoffs now, no more regular season. Um, I, I do think the Ravens they seriously have a chance, but yeah, they they gotta outplay their scheme. They the, the, it's so important. Like that, that Greg Roman and the offense, the the game he he calls a game out of his mind. It has to be like out of his mind type of great. Like it, it, there ain't no room for the silly stuff. It's really not no room for the silly stuff. Uh, and that's on Hobbs, Greg Roman, Mike McDonald, everybody, the players as well too. Um, they got to help each other out. Coaching got to help the players out. Players got to help the coaching out. Players got to help each other out. Coaches got to help each other out. They got to help each other out and really have each other's back. Because if they don't, then they're they going to be on their backs, uh, chilling on the couch soon, relaxing. Next question came from my guy, Brandon G. He said, hope all is well with you and the family. My questions are as follows. Number one, what is your take if Lamar sits out Sunday night? Well, 
He said that he's hurt So that, that's that uh, But number two He said do you believe The knee injury is to the extent That wouldn't allow him to play Oh man yeah He, he sent this before He sent this on January 11th So it's the day before uh, Lamar sent out the tweet That he sent out uh, today uh, And then number three He said do you think Lamar is using this injury To sit out so he can ensure The contract he wants And deserves Now that part um, Now would he play If he had a contract um, if the knee injury is as bad as it seems, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, cause I mean, yeah, obviously with a contract, things are different, but then you still got to think long term. Cause like if, if you injured and you injured like that, like that, then you could not only mess up stuff for right here, but you can mess up stuff for down the road too. Um, and then he said, number four, if the worst case scenario occurs and he does demand a trade, who would you prefer takes over? Sorry for all the questions. I'm sure a lot of Ravens fans pondering these questions as well. Appreciate the content and keep up the exceptional work. I appreciate you, Brandon. Um, who would I prefer take over? I wouldn't even know, man. Um, because I like I I uh it would be so weird, like Ravens life without Lamar. Um, it, it would be very weird, especially for how it's been over these past uh five years. Um, I, I wouldn't want. I love Tyler Huntley. I, I I wouldn't want it to be him though. Um, Anthony Brown. I I, I w would want it to be him either. Um, but I just I don't know who would be out there. Uh, there's I mean possible quarterbacks that are out there. I know my guy mentioned earlier Tom Brady. There's Aaron Rodgers could be a possibility. There's Derek Carr. He could possibly be out there. Um, and there's of course the draft too. Uh, and I'm sure I'm probably forgetting some people too, but. I, I just can't even answer that right now because I just really don't know. Next question came from T-Dub. He said, Super Bowl, one in 2013. This is my first time shooting you a question. I hope you and the family are happy, happy, healthy, and doing awesome. Hey, we are. I appreciate it. He said, so I heard on a lounge podcast that the Ravens fired their offensive coordinator after losing very bad before going into the playoffs. Hmm. This sounds exactly what the brass should do. Uh, we need some kind of change to put a spark in the players' morale. Um, now... He didn't, well, I mean, I, I, after the Broncos game, I said, if, if they don't fire Greg Roman after the Broncos game, then he ain't getting fired. And he didn't. Now, he sent this question on January 7th. Now, because he, he, he asked, do you think if we lose to the Bengals, then, then Greg Roman could be fired? No, I, I wouldn't have thought that. Because, again, the Broncos game, once they didn't fire him after the Broncos game, after that, then he, he was safe for the rest of the year. So I love team. Keep it clean. Thanks for all your hard work and dedication to the channel. I bleed purple and I'm always a Ravens fan for life. Honestly, I think Ravens fans are one of the most passionate, dedicated fans in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Ravens fans, they certainly a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you. Next question came from my guy Jarvis. He said, great job re-signing Roquan for the next five years. So next up is LJ. Mm -hmm. He said, really hope he gets something done because it'll definitely set the franchise back if we don't. A few questions for you, though. Can a player refuse the franchise tag? For example, Lamar Jackson, and if we do re-sign him, uh, who's a realistic wide receiver you think we can get to help this offense? No more wide receivers who've been on the couch. I personally wouldn't mind getting DK. DK Metcalf? I mean, he ain't going nowhere, but, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind DK Metcalf either. Um, but I think uh, we, the one we mentioned earlier, DeAndre Hopkins, I think that is a realistic option, especially since the card it's already put out there publicly that the Cardinals are either going to trade him or they, that is, it's put out there publicly that they're they trying to release him. I mean, they're trying to get rid of him. Excuse me. So he'll either get traded or he'll get released and he can pick wherever he wants to go. Uh, Ravens best bet is if he if they could trade for him, that that's their best bet, because if he becomes a free agent, uh, there are plenty of teams that's going to pay more money than you. So your best bet is to, to trade for him if, if you really want him. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Now, as far as the franchise tag part, can a player refuse the franchise tag? Yeah, they can. Um, they can refuse to sign it. Um, and then they could wait, just wait it out, wait it out. And either the team could be like, no, we're not budging. And the player could come back. I think they would need to have at least, uh, I want to say, how many games is it? I think they would need to have at least like seven or eight games that they were active in a year uh, to have an accrued season for the for for this the season that they're in to count um, on their like contract and toward their overall like years played in the NFL. Because if they sat out the whole year, then the season just wouldn't count to the amount of years that they would have played in the NFL. Therefore, it wouldn't count towards a contract. Therefore, 
if they sat out the whole year, they would be in the same exact position the following year that they were in this year. Uh, so nothing would change. Um, so, yeah, a player can <laughs> refuse the franchise tag. Long story short. Next question came from my guy, DeAndre. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well. My question for you is that since the Browns, Texans, and Cardinals have made moves now that their season is over regarding coaching and coordinators, does that give you hope that whenever we finish, hopefully with the Super Bowl this year, hey, hopefully, uh, does that give you hope that we will f definitely be making our own moves as far as the Raven staff that so desperately needs to be focused on? That's a really good question. Um, mm, for Ravens, not really. Um, I could see them. The most thing I see, Mike McDonald ain't going nowhere. Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. The biggest change I could see happening is Greg Roman. But I, I just don't feel like much would change even if Greg Roman, uh, his contract ran, ran out of They were like, okay, we decided to mutually part ways. Da, 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 we wish him well in the future endeavors, da, da, whatever. I just, I don't think much would change as long as Raven still had the same mindset. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Howard. He said, what's happening, Graven? I know it's playoff time and I'm ready, but I've been thinking lately about the situation of play calling and many of the things that be making us fans shake, shake our head uh, with this Ravens offense. And it hit me. Greg Roman basically told us how he operates and coordinates in his very first press conference when he was introduced as offensive coordinator. A reporter asked him his play calling style and he said, I don't like to leave breadcrumbs behind. At that time, I don't believe the media and us fans really got that analogy to its truest form. Uh, I'm about to explain it so it makes sense. What he meant was when he calls certain plays that works, don't expect to see them again. Basically, the approach is trying very hard to outsmart the opposition, but in reality, he's outsmarting and outcoaching himself with that approach, and it'd be costing us. And Graven, I've been rocking with this channel for the last couple of seasons, and it's been plenty of times on your videos when you said the Ravens do incredible things in one game, and then we just don't see it anymore. Uh, that's the reason. And I've said in the comment section, as well as questions from subscribers, that Harbaugh, Roman, and Wink were too stubborn to change. Uh, they fired Wink, but that was only a third of the problem when it pertains to the coaching situation. Two thirds of the problem are still here. <laughs> Harbaugh and Roman. I can get much deeper on this topic, but I wrote enough in this email uh, that Team Keep It Clean understands where I'm coming from. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah. They, um, you said it, outsmarting themselves. Outsmarting themselves is just a perfect uh, explanation for it and, and just really overthinking things and overcomplicating a lot of stuff too. Yeah, this feels like a dream.